So good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, here to Athens. Uh, the last time I was here was to work with my colleagues from the industry to change European law so that we could create more manufacturing jobs everywhere in Europe, especially here in Greece. And I'm very pleased uh, to discuss with the companies and to see that that change in the law is actually leading to more jobs for Greek people, uh, more manufacturing posts here, and very much an export orientation. Uh, but today's discussion is, is not about our manufacturing. It's not about our exports or creating jobs. It's about what we can do for the Greek patient. And it may seem far away that this discussion on the clawback has something to do with the Greek patient, but it does. It, it does because the Greek system, as we heard from the various speakers, including the former minister and the current minister, recognize that this system is on the verge of collapse. And if this system collapses, the people who will suffer will be the, the Greek patients. So I'd like to, as a leitmotif for the discussions today, to keep in mind that this change and reform to the system in Greece is ultimately about ensuring that Greek patients get their medicines. So Medicines for Europe, we're an association of manufacturers of generic medicines, biosimilar and value-added products. Uh, we have five main values that define our policies, patients, quality, value, sustainability, and partnership. We represent these manufacturers who produce generic medicines. 67% of all medicines in Europe are generics, biosimilars, and value-added, more complex products. So our industry is a major employer, uh, not just here in Greece, but also across Europe. And we're very important for the security of supply of medicines to European patients. When people talk about generic medicines, the first thing they think about is the savings. That is actually uh, important, but savings are only a tool. They're a tool for access. And you can see here on this point right here that the generic medicines industry in Europe has doubled the access to medicines for patients. This is really the fundamental point, and this is why it's fundamental that there are reforms to the Greek pharmaceutical system over time. So why are generic medicines so important? They increase access to medicines, as my previous slide has showed. But it's not just increased access to medicines, it's better health outcomes. Because with generic medicines, you can give earlier access where it's medically appropriate and treat patients better. You can help improve medication adherence by easing the access, lowering, for example, the co-payments, a big challenge here in Greece. You can have a positive economic impact on the society as well as other aspects. There is a challenge in Greece with respect to unmet needs and healthcare. You can see on the green dot that Greece is rather low compared to the European average. So there is still an effort to be made here in Greece in terms of ensuring access to healthcare for unmet needs. And you can see that the differences are of course greater for the poorer population. And here is just an example of barriers to access in Greece, for example, in the asthma care. So one of the challenges, and I think the challenge with the, the Greek system is that there's a combination of a, of a series of very negative uh, tools in place that limit the use of generic medicines. And you can see that essentially, contrary to most other countries, there are no real incentives to use or to dispense generic medicines. Uh, the pharmacy structure is not really incentivizing the pharmacist to dispense. There are a number of different opportunities to block the dispensing of generics. And the end result is that Greece has a very low use of generic competition in its system, creating a lot of inefficiencies. The inefficiencies lead to an efficient market, high uh, 
clawback as well as high co-payments ultimately for the patient. So transferring the inefficiencies of the system over to the Greek patient ultimately. I think this is a, a slide that you know. Uh, of course, Greece went through a terrible financial crisis a few years ago, um, and it dramatically reduced its pharmaceutical expenditure. This kind of reduction, which is by far the highest in Europe, possibly one of the highest reductions in the whole world in percentage terms, of course, cannot be introduced without any impact on the healthcare system and on the functioning of the pharmaceutical market over time. Now that Greece has come out of the bailout process, out of the Troika process, it's time to think about a more efficient model as we go forward. So of course, this is a slide that we've seen before. The Greek pharmaceutical spending has essentially been capped uh, roughly since 2014. We know that the population served due to the large uh, migration of refugees and economic migrants, et cetera, onto the Greek territory has led to a dramatic increase in the number of patients actually being served here. Um, in addition to that, there is a, a huge, huge wave of expensive, innovative drugs that are coming to the market. I don't want to say that's a bad thing. Many of those innovative drugs will bring benefits to the patients. The difficulty is in this system, the Greek system, these innovative products, if you want to serve the Greek patients, and I believe you do, will break the system. Already in Europe, countries like Norway, countries like Denmark, can barely afford the introduction of this new wave of oncology innovative products. They ha do not have capped budgets. They can have their budgets increase or more flexible because they are richer countries than Greece. How is Greece going to manage this situation of a dramatic increase of the number of people treated due to economic migrants and refugees, an increase of innovative cancer drugs that are possibly good but very, very expensive in a system with an absolute cap budget? We're going to those red question marks there, which will lead to some dramatic situations. I think we heard from the industry speakers here about the concern that products will be withdrawn from the Greek market ultimately, which will make the system even more inefficient and cause dramatic problems. Of course, we've seen this. Uh, we have a, a dramatic uh, increase in the cost of the uninsured, and I agree there is a, a legitimate point here as to how is Greece supposed to cope with the large influx of of people from outside of Greece, of migrants here, uh, without sufficient support from the European Union, for example. Um, we have a dramatic increase in the clawback. Probably these systems are combining the increase in the number of people treated, the increase of innovative products entering the market. And Greece is now at a point where this is extremely unsustainable. And uh, together with Romania, probably the worst pharmaceutical market in all of Europe. Greece is at the same level. So you have reached the highest level of the worst in Europe. Uh, and I think this is obviously totally unsustainable. If you look at the situation, I don't think you want Romania to be your role model. So one of the challenges, I don't want to be entirely negative here. There are solutions out there. And one of the solutions, of course, is to allow competition from your own pharmaceutical industry, which is based here, largely, um, to enable competition from generic medicines to help contribute to a more sustainable system rather than pursuing the clawback cap budget approach. Um, obviously, Greece has a limited generic competition rate. It has a, a very high rate of use of branded off-patent drugs, of innovator penetration for patented products, and an extremely low, one of the lowest in Europe's use of generics. And there are reasons for this. There are reasons why Greece is so low in terms of generic competition. One is that Greece does not allow competition to determine the price of generic medicines. 
it uses external reference pricing. This is something very unusual in Europe, uh, something that is not very common, and there's a good reason for that. It's because this typically lowers the level of generic competition, so it reduces competition uh, in the countries that apply this. In fact, both the World Health Organization and the European Commission recommend not to apply external reference pricing to generic medicines. In addition to that, Greece is one of the few countries in Europe, along with Romania, as I mentioned, to apply clawback taxes directly to generic medicines, to lower cost medicines. This is essentially a form of a discriminatory tax on generic medicines because of their legally lower prices, uh, of course, in the system. And due to the fact that generics are supposed to drive high rates of growth at entry, at expiry uh, of the exclusivity or of the patent. Um, as a result, there's a limited amount of competition, and so generic companies are not interested in, uh, let's say, competing in the Greek market. And that's why you see this, this low level of, of treatment. And this is, of course, extremely inefficient. And this is why the European Commission, the OECD, they look specifically at the level of generic competition in the market and they express great concern when countries do not achieve a certain level of competition, let's say around 65%, which is where we are in Europe, 67%. So these are obviously things that could be reflected upon and you could use generic competition much, much more efficiently. Um, so as I, I was saying, uh, Greece has a combination of measures which harm or reduce competition in the market. Um, one of them is external reference pricing, and here you have not only the European Commission, but even the tool, the mechanism which is used for external reference pricing, which is called Europid, it recommends not to use this tool for generic medicines. Uh, but of course, the Greek government has this uh, in its law, and so it's not really the most efficient approach. The second uh, aspect is that there are, uh, there's a positive reimbursement list, ATC4 level, but with many, many exceptions. Um, there's a, a co-payment uh, inefficiency in terms of the system, so there's not enough of an incentive, if you wish, for the patients to use the uh, generic medicines and a lot of waste as a result in the system. Um, and finally, there is the role of, of the uh, additional rebates, if you wish, given to the public system. Uh, I think what we can see here is that the combination of the expenditure, the rebate, and the clawback is leading to a, a dramatic point of unsustainability. Um, we recognize, of course, that the government needs a mechanism to control the expenditure, especially of, of new, more expensive products. That's something that's a European-wide issue. There's increasing cooperation uh, to enable this, which should not mean exclusion, which should not mean that Greek patients should not have access to these products. There just needs to be greater cooperation in, in how to control uh, some of those introductions as it can be very challenging from a cost perspective. But on the other hand, using competition from generic medicines in the off-patent sector is the most efficient tool. And if you look at the countries with the most efficient use of generic medicines, that is exactly how they organize the market. Germany, France, UK, they have a separation between the off-patent market where competition determines the pricing, and then they have an on-patent, more expensive medicines market, if you wish, where they have various mechanisms to, to enable the appropriate controls and the appropriate access, as I said. Sorry, I seem to be stuck. So, the various measures that are out there, price cuts, paybacks, clawbacks, hidden barriers to generic competition, an absence of incentives, and, and reference pricing both internal and external is leading to low generic competition in the market here. And this is ultimately wasteful, uh, as is pointed out by all of the international studies. So there are actually relatively simple measures that could be introduced into the Greek market quickly and efficiently to enable greater use of competition. So obviously one is to provide the right framework of incentives for pharmacies, for pharmacists, for generic dispensing. 
I know a lot of people in Greece, they say, well, the Greeks, they have uh, some kind of cultural uh, problem with generics, etc. cetera. Uh, that is, of course, something that you have in all countries. So it's not something totally new, and it's not something rather specific to Greece. In fact, um, I'm actually half French citizen. My name probably doesn't give that away. But in France, uh, there is much, much more cultural resistance to generics, yet France has a super high generic penetration rate on the substitution list, at least it's close to 90%. So why would a country which has, believe me, much more cultural problems with generics and various things with medicines in general, um, why would they be able to achieve a 90% penetration rate on the list and Greece would not? Uh, so I think this, this notion that there's a cultural problem is, is a myth. It's just the mechanisms, the incentives are not in place to enable that. And so this really needs to be thought about. And there are many, many other countries with this so-called cultural problem, which in fact doesn't really exist when you have the right tools in place. Uh, the second, second point is that generic pricing, the competition between generic companies, this is the point, it enables the price competition. And of course, you need a certain mechanism to, so that the price competition can be given back to the society, given back to the, the budget. Um, but having a combination of both internal reference pricing and external reference pricing is ultimately very destructive, especially external reference pricing. You basically give your pricing policy outside of your country to countries which you don't control. You don't know why they're reducing those prices or for what reasons. So this is something really dangerous, I think, for a country. And the final point is, of course, and it was discussed amply, and it's the point of this conference, having a clawback on generics, that it applies directly to generics, um, is something that is totally destructive of generic competition and drives the generics out of the market. Greece is now at the level of Romania of a couple of years ago. What happened in Romania a few years ago is 2,000, 2,000 generic products were withdrawn from the market. You are now at the same level that they are at. So I think those threats that were made are not threats, this is reality about how companies cannot subsidize the medicines for the state. They cannot give the medicines away at a lower cost than their cost of development and production. This is not possible. And they may be able to do it for a short period, but the companies will have to divert that production to other markets at some point. And we can see, while it's positive for jobs, the Greek industry is turning itself almost entirely towards exports. That's great for jobs, employment, et cetera, et cetera. But what about the Greek patient? What about the, the service to the Greek patient that this industry wants to provide? That's very, very important. And I think it's very, very clear, and this is the case in 99% of European countries where clawbacks exist, this should not apply to the generic industry. Or if it does, it should be applied in a very modulated way so we don't have this incredible discrimination against the industry. So I'd like to thank you, and I hope uh, that we can continue this conversation. Thank you, Mr. Van den Hoffen. Um, well, uh, let, me, let me take a sec to ask the audience whether they have any questions. Do you want to ask some questions to Mr. Van den Hoffen? Do you have any questions to ask him? No. The only thing I can see here from the system is uh, whether you can give us a definition of what is a value-added medicine, because here in Greece we don't hear this term very often. Yeah, so sure. Uh, a value-added medicine is where we improve on an existing uh, molecule. So for example, this could be the repurposing of a molecule for a new indication. It could be the combination of two molecules uh, or the combination of a molecule with a device or a software. Um, and it could also be a reformulation. For example, a reformulation to improve the adherence or to reduce uh, the side effects of the medicine. Um, and so this is something that our industry has uh, developed a couple of years ago to create more opportunity, especially to help with the management of chronic diseases. So it was mentioned here, some of the chronic diseases, asthma, diabetes. Uh, if you look in most healthcare systems, the cost of crises associated with chronic diseases, the poor management, if you wish, of chronic diseases, is the biggest cost in the healthcare system. With these value-added medicines, we can reduce 
many of the crises, many of the difficulties with the management of chronic diseases, where we shouldn't blame the patient. It's really that it's difficult to manage these diseases. Think of asthma, think of diabetes, think of cardio diseases. Think of the difficulties patients have with adherence, for example. And all of these uh, products and developments can help improve that uh, type of management and ultimately treat patients better and lower costs for the healthcare system. So that's the purpose of these medicines. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. I would like to... Adrian, I, I would like to thank you once again for coming uh, here. There was, there was a slight change of the program because there is an extra parliamentary hearing today and the minister had to go. I would like to ask a more general question. How, wh what do you see about the outlook of the generic industry in Europe? Can we remain competitive version, versus Asian and other, uh, you know, parts of the world and companies? And how could we, Alin, uh, how can we more, be more aligned in terms of our strategy, the Greek, the Greek uh, industry here with, uh, with the Medicines for Europe Association? Yeah, so thanks for that, that question, very, very valid one. So I think uh, we have been working, as you know, to change the framework to enable Europe as manufacturers to compete globally, to compete mainly with Asia, because they are the main competitor, India and China. Um, I think the recent changes to some laws have stopped Europe from shooting itself in the foot, and so enable us to keep some manufacturing in Europe with the SPC manufacturing waiver, for example, but we can do more uh, to improve this. I think the main discussion we have to have is a little bit the discussion we're having today. Um, the pharmaceutical industry is a partner for governments in, in terms of healthcare. Um, and I think we need to help the governments understand this, this partnership concept. Uh, we have a problem with things like the clawback we have a problem with hospital procurement in the sense that it's not taking account of manufacturing. It's not considering security of manufacturing supply into the equation. And the result is that our industry is turning more and more towards export where we are competitive, even against China, um, and less and less for our own internal market. And I'm, I'm concerned about that because ultimately, as European manufacturers, we have a certain commitment to our people, to our own people, and I hope that we can continue to, to be competitive in our market. So I think the next European Commission really needs to dramatically change the pharmaceutical policy. So to, first of all, incentivize or make a link between serving the patients, increasing access, and ensuring good manufacturing within Europe. Uh, and these two need to, be, to need to be bridged. For that, we need changes to things like the clawback. We know the European Commission had a hand in putting the clawback in Greece, and so the Commission now needs to be more forceful in encouraging the Greek government for structural reforms. The Commission is aware. They are just avoiding their own responsibility in what is obviously a flawed policy uh, for Greece. Um, so we plan to also bring up uh, their role in, in, in harming the Greek market, ultimately, uh, and, and which will have a negative impact on the Greek patients. So we want the Commission to also take its responsibilities where it has some. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. van der Hoven. It has been an honor having you here, and thank you for bringing uh, your expertise uh, to the table. Thank you. Okay.